Good morning. We have just been made aware, aware of another positive case of COVID-19 in Arviet. The whole Kiba region is going into lockdown as a precaution. This is a fast-moving situation, so please be patient with us. Nunavut now has four confirmed cases of COVID-19. I'll let Dr. Patterson give more details and answer questions, but as always, please act responsibly and be strict with our public health measures. I know you're probably sick of me saying it over and over, but wash your hands, practice social distancing and physical distancing, limit visiting, and keep gathering small. In the Kivadla, stay home if you feel sick. And if you feel sick, call the COVID hotline at 1-888-975-8601. This uh, telephone line is manned from 10 in the morning till 6 in the evening. Eastern Standard Time. Take care, Nunavut Mute. Use common sense and don't take chances with your health or anyone else's health. To everyone in Sunny Kidra, Rankin and Alvit, take care of yourself. <coughs> Thank you. <coughs> Good morning. <coughs> Last night, we were informed that an individual from Aviat has tested positive for COVID-19. This person returned to Aviat after spending two weeks in one of the isolation hubs in Winnipeg. And roughly seven days after returning home, they became ill um, and presented to the health center. Over the course of two to three days, their symptoms worsened and they were medevac to Winnipeg. The person was tested for COVID-19 with a positive result coming back on November 12th, and uh, this individual is out of hospital and doing well. Contact tracing has begun, and uh, our rapid response team is on standby to assist if needed. The individual who tested positive for COVID-19 in Rankin Inlet has a similar history. They were in Winnipeg, completed isolation in late October, and developed symptoms approximately one week after returning to Nunavut. This individual is stable and remains at home, and contact tracing continues, but to date no other individuals in Rankin Inlet have been diagnosed with COVID-19. <laughs> November well, the common travel history is concerning. We are not yet able to say with certainty how these individuals were exposed to COVID-19. For that reason, and considering there are now two cases in the region, we have decided to uh, tighten restrictions and increase public health measures across the Kivalik. Effective immediately, all for-profit and not-for-profit business in all Kivalik communities must close, with the exception of grocery stores, fuel and motor vehicle service stations, Canada Post Corporation, and financial institutions. Restaurants open for takeout service may remain open under strict rules, including 
all customers must remain two meters apart at all times and no more than 10 people are permitted to line up for service at one time. Personal service providers such as hairstylists, masseuses and uh, must also close. Masks are now mandatory for everyone while outside their homes in the Kivalek. In addition, all schools, including Nunavut Arctic College, federal, territorial, and municipal government offices, must close to all but essential work. All gatherings are restricted to five people and there should be no gathering in homes. Effective Sunday, travel within and, and out of the Kivalik region will be restricted to emergency medical travel, critical entry for medical response, flight emergencies and cargo. Travelers from outside the Kivalik transiting through or traveling to the region will still be allowed. Um, anyone traveling to the Kivalik for, pardon me, anyone traveling to the Kivalik region for longer than 24 hours will be subject to the travel restrictions. Hunters may also leave their communities but may not travel to any other community or populated area. <laughs> Anyone who has a critical need to travel out of the Kivalik after Sunday must apply to CPHO travel requests at gov.nu.ca and to be granted a travel authorization letter. I strongly advise everyone to follow the public health measures in place. They are our best defense in the effort to prevent and break transmission of this virus. Thank you. CPHO travel request at gov.nu.ca. To any young girl, I have seen all the other women who are coming out to go to me. Sangi, you may have to get up and get cool. My mother is here to look at all the other women who are coming out to go to me. That was a poor midget. It's a tour. I got to go to my new car to go to the museum. My family and I are coming out now.
Trevor Wright, uh, Nunavut News. Um, is this connected to the case that came up in Rankin not too long ago? Or? Trevor Wright, Nunavut News. There's, there's no known link right now, but it, we can't say that there isn't. Uh, so we're investigating to see what, uh, what we might find. Uh, is there any cause for concern given that symptoms appeared in this latest case after isolation was finished? Well, it means that something happened after isolation or at the end of it that for the majority of people the uh, symptoms show up within uh, in that four or five to eight day period after exposure and so we need to figure out exactly what the timing was in that um, in uh, it's extremely rare to have an incubation period longer than 14 days. That's why the worldwide accepted standard is 14 days. So to have two people develop, uh, like take 21 days to show symptoms is unheard of. So it's, it happened after that. Sorry, it, the exposure happened after isolation or at the end of isolation. Atamana <laughs> news. Are there any plans to immediately change the protocols for isolation hubs or leaving isolation hubs? Not at the moment. We are going to be looking into how this uh, exposure happened and if it's related to uh, protocols or policies that we can change to minimize the risk, we will do so. We had the concern earlier, uh, but we felt with one case we wanted to take the time to sort out what was going on and not make inappropriate or random decisions. But with two cases, it raises the concern that there will be more COVID in the in the region, so we felt we needed to act before we got all the information. So yesterday you said that we have the ability to roughly deploy three rapid response teams. There's two deployed now, one on standby. How's our capacity potentially looking? Beyond this, we'll be looking at redeploying nurses from other health centers or finding alternative ways. We may be relying more on the virtual public health nurses. It, it depends on what happens over the next few days. Uh, 
Nous avons dit que 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 nous avons have you spoken about the RV engine and the ranking case possibly being related to an isolation hub? Um, why isn't the 70 kilowatt case being considered as part of that as well? Why is the what case? The case in 70 kilowatt? Jackie McKay, CBC, Kunel, Harsima, Vitakua, Avea Mute, Ambalo, Avea Mikanga, Sinang, Miluna, Luna, Tosima, you, Duran, and Rasuga, and Lunani, to your moving in to be well in the Sumalita and the San Kilo, and Mitame in the Jangila. It's possibly linked to it, but there's uh, another equally plausible explanation that may account for the cases in Santa Kilowack. Um, you can wow. translate that and all. <laughs> On rare occasions, when two people go into isolation together, one can be exposed just before they go into isolation, and then that can lead to uh, asymptomatic transmission while they're in isolation, and then another one picks it up and comes out with isolate with symptoms after isolation. Um, that's a known weakness of uh, isolating two or more individuals together, um, and there's just no practical or acceptable way around it. It still reduces the risk because this is not common, but we'll never get the risk to zero. Sir Marsigun Nasung Matanalo, so Lutur Mivin may have to get young at Emma, Sir Marbigun Narsigayato, Anisimalalo Artillogi, to your Mivin Menu to get Hala Tillogi Tabba Tana Sangi, Nevutamatum, Makisani, Taiman, Makisani, Pivan Lerudin, Ila, Sir Martelli, good it's at your man now, your Kisani, Taiman Alima, Peter Hang it to me, Gunna Langalos, Mangi, Matama, Mat, how you may own and not Malik. What will happen to the people in that isolation hub right now? Will they be able to return home? They, they will if they want to. They'll be offered that same choice of staying at, at the hub for a little bit longer to see what happens, to let things uh, get sorted out, or they can come home now if they want. And the transfer of the Canadian press. What does this mean for Kivalik residents who are currently outside the region in terms of getting back home? I'm a transfer Canadian press. Uh, if they want to go back home, they can, but they got to go back home and, and stay there. Um, there's uh, After Sunday, there will not be, uh, or there'll be very restricted travel between communities. <coughs> So you told us about the travel history of the case in Rankin and Arvia. What can you tell us about the travel history of the case in Sunny Kilowak? They were isolated travelers as well. Kent Friscoll, APTN National News. Uh, Dr. Patterson, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, there's two medical hubs in Winnipeg, right? I'm wondering 
the RV patient, the Rankin patient, and the Santa Kilowatt patients, were they in different Winnipeg medical hubs or the same one? Okay, just go APT and Kunilu Taparison, Tamaroman, Nalona, Beginner, Hanga, Marco, Mati, Tuyomivi, Anna Bella, Samayamo, Nutu, Vigali, Taco, Cutting a Yuminuva, Vermeo, Carcinor Mio, and Malo, Sanikilo Mio. There's, there's, you're correct, there's two hubs. Some of them were in one hub, so, uh, others in the other hub. Uh, pre the last round of restrictions put in in the Kavalik were also extended to a Kaluit out of uh, what I believe you called was an abundance of caution. Is there any thought towards expanding extending those current Kavalik restrictions to a Kaluit now due to our direct link to rank? Not at the moment because there's, uh, with what we know of travel, we, we haven't been able to identify anyone who's uh, come north from Winnipeg through to Iqaluit in that pattern, so that risk, there's still a risk, but it's not as high as it is for the other Kivalik communities. Okay. I was texting a question from Dylan Robertson from the Winnipeg Free Press. He was wanting to know if the RV and Rankin Inlet cases have any contacts traced to Manitoba and if the town of Churchill and the province of Manitoba has been notified of any possible exposures. Winnipeg Free Press um, in the one case in um, for, for one of these individuals the infectious period uh, definitely began after they returned home and I'm just working out the math in my head apologies um, so for both of them actually, pardon me, for both individuals, uh, the infectious period began after, well after they arrived home in Nunavut and so there's been no contact tracing back into Manitoba at this point. However, one of the individuals was diagnosed in Manitoba, so Manitoba Health is involved by virtue of that. <laughs> I was wondering if you could provide an update on the cases in Rankin and Santa Kilowatt and how the contact tracing is going. Dustin Patano, not sure you could kind of send on me Santa Kilowatt, me look at the yard, you mean on the house of Tony, Hanoi Palelka. Contact tracing in Aviat has barely begun. Um, contact tracing in Rankin is progressing nicely, but uh, I don't know the exact numbers of uh, tests that have been done or any of that that information off the top of my head. Sandy Kilowack is going well. So far, there's just the two positive cases and, and we've um, identified uh, the high-risk cases and if, uh, they're remaining in isolation despite negative tests. Sandy 
نلو نه خس مات شایل قبول و غیر نقد میگن نه نخ سید اما لو سلیت نلو نه تولعی کلاتی لگو نو بچه آن نقد هنگی نسلی آنی تعلیت داریم. Jackie McKay, CBC News. For um, Arctic College students in the Kavalik right now who live outside the Kavalik, should they be returning home? Jackie McKay, CBC, Kunita, Kosila, to submit me to Kivan Leo Silatani, and you come in Utrahak. That's a very much an individual decision. Um, you know, if it's possible to stay and, and wait a bit and let us. Uh, and wait until we get more information. That would be my recommendation. But people may have compelling reasons to get home that I'm not aware of, and if they have them, then um, that's acceptable. <laughs> My next question is for the Premier. Are you able to say how many students are in the Kavalik? No, I can't. Dakwa ilinato kivalo me kapi yung mga ata kawi mga itong. The transfer to Canadian Press. This is probably for Dr. Patterson. The positive case in Arbiat, why was the individual not tested for COVID in Arbiat? The presentation was atypical, was not expected to be COVID when they were medevaced out. Uh, and same question I asked yesterday about Rankin. Where can people get um, PPE, masks, uh, things like that? In terms of where the masks are, uh, there is some made available at both the Northern Store and the Co-op. The Hamlet office also had some available outside the Hamlet uh, office yesterday. And in speaking with the mayor uh, yesterday, he had advised that uh, if there are people who cannot uh, present themselves to where these uh, masks are, uh, th they just need to contact the uh, Hamlet or the uh, Rankin Inlet uh, Emergency Office, and they will have them delivered to, th to the households. Kent Driscoll, EPTN National News. Uh, Dr. Patterson, you had mentioned that Santa Kilowak had a fairly decent medical capacity due to the opening of a new health centre. The timing worked out there. And Rankin Inlet is a medical hub. I'm wondering if you could explain the medical capacity of Irviet. Kent Driscoll, EPTN, Kunilu, Dr. Patterson, Uchaksimagavit. Some of this will be for people from outside of Nunavut. It's a health centre. It is staffed by community health nurses who have uh, an expanded scope of practice compared to most uh, registered nurses. 
Uh, it does not have the capacity to admit people. It can stabilize people who are acutely ill while they uh, arrange for medevac to get them transferred south to uh, to a hospital. I think it's a usual complement of staff is six or seven community health nurses, uh, two public health nurses, and one, as most of the time, there's a physician in town. Where? In Aviat. Sorry. It now looks like all of the current cases have the Winnipeg travel hubs in common. In light of that, I'm wondering what changes, if any, are you making to the travel hubs or the travel quarantine regime as a total? We don't know yet. We'll be looking very closely and trying to uh, doing what's needed to find out how this happened. And from there, we can figure out what can be done to uh, reduce the risk of it happening again. Uh, can we expect to, to write none of the news? Uh, can we expect to see more medical travelers in Akalawood given the restrictions in the Kivalak region? Trevor Wright, no, right now we are um, uh, limiting that to only when absolutely necessary. Uh, given the um, uh, are we, should we be concerned about the uh, capacity for the region if we see other outbreaks in other communities? It depends on the size, it depends on the timing, um, it, it depends on a number of things. Um, the, the lessons learned from right back to the very beginning of this pandemic is that if we don't control spread, then health care systems uh, can easily get overwhelmed, as happened in New York and Italy. And we all know that we have less capacity. Um, that's, we have to allow for that in our plans, and that's part of why we're being extremely aggressive to break transmission as early as possible to prevent that from happening. So the biofire machine in Rankin is now good to go. What does that mean for testing capacity in the region? Dustin Patar, Dana, how you saw to you buy on fire, all in the hotel, cut out when it comes to me. With the biofire and the gene expert, um, the 
Rankin Inlet Lab can do uh, about 80 tests per day. 80? 80. 80. I should say that's if one lab tech is working full time on that, so it takes them away from other stuff. If they get um, if they get too many tests and they can't do them all, we can shift them here to Callowit, where under the same circumstances we could do probably 120 a day. And if that gets exceeded, we will be shipping samples south again. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure this next question is for, so I'll just ask it and let you guys figure it out. I'm hearing that stores in Santa Kilowack are running low on supplies. Both stores currently don't have formula for babies. Is the GN doing anything to assist logistically? Santa Kilowack is not a good thing. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do it. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do Thank you for the question. Uh, if this is our, my first time hearing about this, and if it is, then we'll get right into it. As part of our network of work, uh, we, we go through the supply chain of every community, and in this particular case, if that is the case, then we'll make sure the right authorities and the right companies get, get to the bottom of this as soon as possible. Thank you for giving us the notification. Jack McKay, CBC News. My question is for Dr. Patterson. Are we able to confirm COVID-19 tests in um, Nunavut now, or do we still have to get those confirmed in the South? Jack McKay, CBC News. Dalona si kung nakisibita tamahan ni Nunavut may nubat yon na tohay na nirailo tau balo sulihan lona ni dalona tau gahak. The biofire devices in Rankin Inlet and in Akalawit are confirmatory. So they confirmatory both for positive and negative, so they do not have to go south after testing uh, in Rankin or Akalawit. The mayor of Clyde River was asking to suspend travel to the community starting today for two weeks. Do communities have the ability to stop travel to their communities, and would you recommend those? I can't speak to whether or not communities have the authority to do that. Um, it wouldn't be for communities that are not in the flight path or in close proximity to communities that we know have COVID-19, I would not recommend it. Um, and I'll let Uli trans translate that part and carry on. The, uh, my understanding of the Public Health Act and the declaration of emergency is that we have the um, 
we can do the bare minimum needed to delay the arrival or the spread of the pandemic. And so requiring people to isolate in the south and then saying you can't travel between communities would would be um, would be hard to defend uh, on that basis. It would be an overreach. Um, and there's some essential staff, even if they're in Nunavut, they still need to travel and can do so safely to do vital work. So it, it would not be recommended outside of those uh, high-risk situations. Emma Tranter, the Canadian Press. What's your advice for um, people who are in the Kavalik right now uh, who aren't residents of that region? What should they be doing? Emma Tranter, Canadian Press. I don't know how to get out of it, it depends. That's uh, very much an individual decision. There's uh, there's a little bit of time for people to uh, get home under uh, before the the uh, pardon me before the restriction comes in place on Sunday. Uh, but at the same time, they have to balance the risks. They're uh, depending upon where they are of getting further stranded, getting exposed to COVID-19. So it's a decision that each person is going to have to make for themselves. Um, I'll let Uli translate that. <laughs> Right now, for people who have left or will be leaving shortly, uh, as long as they've not been named a contact or we don't later on find out that they're a, a, a definite contact, with COVID-19, the recommendation is that they self-monitor for 14 days after leaving. So that's all the things we talked about yesterday, but it, it's worth repeating. They uh, stay as much as possible, maintain distancing and separation. If they can't, they wear a mask. And as soon as they get any symptoms or feel unwell, they isolate themselves and call the COVID hotline. Ken Priscoll, APTN National News. Uh, Dr. Patterson, uh, should people who stayed at the Winnipeg travel hubs over the last seven days or 14 days self-monitor or self-isolate? And could you ex please explain the difference between the self-monitoring and the self-isolation as part of that? Sure, and that's a good question that confuses a lot of people. Self-isolation or isolation is staying at home 
for 14 days or 14 days after an exposure happened. Um, and it's, you know, staying in your own bedroom and using your own bathroom, ideally. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Self-monitoring, people are um, allowed much greater freedom and they can uh, go to work, they can be out and about but they should be maintaining distancing and separation at all times. Um, if they can't, they should wear a mask, and as soon as they uh, feel unwell, they should isolate themselves at home or wherever they can and contact the hotline. <laughs> Self-isolation we use for higher risk scenarios where we know somebody's been in contact and had significant contact. It's either uh, and that's usually 10 minutes or longer and less than six feet. Uh, so they're close proximity for a good length of time. Six feet. Self-monitoring is recommended in cases where there's been just very brief transient uh, contact, like, you know, passing in the hall or a 30-second conversation, or where people have been in the same general area and it's impossible to... Um, quantify or get an absolute measurement of the contact. Uh, Dr. Patterson, that was a very useful answer, but there was a, the first part of the question we kind of got away from. What should the people who were at the medical travel hubs in Winnipeg be doing? Self-isolating, self-monitoring, or something else altogether? Sorry about that. Got ahead of myself. The people who were at the hubs and traveling through and at any of the isolation hubs, not just Winnipeg, should be self-monitoring for 14 days after. So they can go back to work and, and carry on with, with most activities. But as soon as they get symptoms, they should isolate immediately and contact either the hotline or their local health center. And self-isolation in Nunavut can be very difficult due to conditions we all know, especially the overcrowded housing. I'm wondering for some of the people who need to self-isolate but are in crowded households, what steps are being taken for them to be able to properly self-isolate? Um, we've uh, created lists in the past of, of uh, available spaces to isolate people 
hotels, dorms, vacant housing. Um, we're renewing that to make use of it, or so we've got an up-to-date list if if needed. And right now, the people that are in isolation have uh, felt comfortable isolating where they are. Solo il ne artino to your me view unique, Ubalo in no tos mang it to nick illunic, takwa nalang mangata titarata can near to kiss any man no yani tailiga tita you a kakriya mata a sing in no rehas mang it to check in the case, CBC News. Um people on the Facebook feed are wondering why you haven't chosen to close all schools across the territory. Jack and KCBC Kumnita Kwagu Facebook Kua Persutu Halunga Sumanuna Vulima Melin Nabe Matu Yang in Mangata. Because we know that there's COVID in two communities, with both of them being in one region, the impact of that on the chance of there being COVID in, say, Joe Haven or other communities is very small. And, um, it would not be sustainable to close the schools for long periods of time across the territory based on two cases. This next question I um, don't think is for you, but I'll let you guys decide who wants to answer it. Um, uh, for people who have tickets to go home at Christmas in the Kvalik, um, uh, is there the G will the GM work with the airlines to ensure that they don't lose those travel credits? Thank you. They'd, uh, anyone who's got tickets with the airlines that won't travel, then they'd work with the airline. This is no different than uh, when this all COVID started in March. It'll be the very same rules that apply then that apply now.